Dear participants, welcome to the course on supply chain digitization. It is jointly being taught by Professor Priyanka Verma, Professor Sushmita Narayana and Professor Dehaprat Das uh, from Indian Institute of Management, Mumbai. So this is lecture 8 of module 3 that is analytics in supply chain management. So in the last lecture, we have developed this regression tree and we explain this tree to you. So, in this lecture, uh, first part we will give you the data of few more uh, retail stores and then we will try to find out what is the expected demand from these retail stores. Okay. So, now let us start uh, with retailer A. So, retailer A which is located in West region, balanced credit is 10 lakh rupees and then urban. So, it is located in urban area, age 12 years, size of the store is 8000 square feet, promotional offer was given during that time period and we had 3 holidays like can I predict the order quantity from this retailer that is demand uh, for this retailer. So, how can I do this? Yes, I can. So, as you have to see these 4 rule. So, first I have to check store size. The store size is 8000 square feet which is falling here either in node 3 or in node 4 both the node I have so, if I show the bigger picture in both the node, node 3 and node 4, the size of the store is less than or equal to 30.5 thousand square feet which is matching our criteria. Then the promotion offer was given that is 1. So, promotion offer was given. So, it is matching this promotion is equal to 1, size is less than or equal to 30.5 thousand. So, the predicted demand will be 2360. Now, can you find out the predicted demand of retailer B? Yes, I can. So, first I have to see the size of the store. Size of the store in this case is 33,000 square feet. So, obviously, size is big. So, that means it is either in node 5 or in node 6. So, it will be in one of the node. Then next I have to see age, age is 23, age is 23 means this node. So, retailer B will fall here, so retailer B will fall here and the predicted demand is 8227. So, from this retailer I would predict that they will place an order of 8227 unit. So, now if we if I show you the bigger uh, re like regression tree size is more than 30.5 thousand square feet. So, I will go to node 2 after going to node 2 I have to see age. In this case age is more than 17.5 for retailer B. So, therefore, my prediction is 8227. Now, can you say or can you predict what is the demand of retailer C whose characteristic is like this located in north balanced credit is 3 lakh rupees semi urban area age 12 years old size 20,000 square feet promotional offer was given by the retailer I have like 2 holidays. So, what would be my demand? So, first I have to check size of the store size of the store is 20 that means either node 3 or node 4. Then if I am in node 3 and node 4 next parameter I have to see promotion, promotion I was given. So, I am into this so it is C. So, the predicted value will be 2, 3, 
six zero. So for this kind of uh, retailer who is located in north region, balance of the credit is three thousand like three lakh rupees. Semi urban area, twelve years of age. That means like last twelve years the retail store is running. Size of the store is twenty thousand square feet. Promotional offer was given. Two holidays I have during this week. Then I would predict the demand will be two three six zero. So if I see it in a large decision entry, the complete decision entry size is twenty thousand square feet, which is less than thirty point less than equal to thirty point five thousand square feet, and promotional offer give, was given. So I am here two three six zero. Now I'll do for one more. So let us say there is another retailer called retailer D, uh, which is having this kind of characteristic. So can I predict the demand? Of course we can uh, with this data. So first I have to see size. Size is twelve here. That means less than equal to thirty point five. So I, either I am in node three or I am in node four. Then I have to see the promotion. Promotion was not given. So I am here. So for D. I am here. So the predicted value is nine hundred forty-three, and A would also fall here. So A and D, A and C. So A and C will fall here. D is here, and B is here. Similarly, I can have any retailer. So you can give me the data of any retailer, and you need to give me the value of these seven parameters. Then I can predict what would be the Demand of this retailer using this regression entry. So I can predict the demand using this regression entry. Now the question is how this tree was built at the beginning. Like what is the kind of algorithm uh, runs behind? Okay. You have seen classification entry in this module only. So regression entry has lot of similarity with the classification entry. So only there will be few minor changes here and there. So we'll explain that, okay? But there are a lot of similarity. So now let us understand the steps of building a regression entry model. So this is the whole regression entry model uh, which we have seen now. Now the question is how this model was built? Why the node zero was splitted by the parameter size of the store? Why node one was splitted using promotion? Why node two was splitted using age? There are seven variables, but why these three variable got importance? Now, if age is concerned, why the cutoff value is seventeen point five? Why not ten? Why not twenty? Why not eighteen? Why not seventeen point four? So, why this particular value of the age is used for Splitting node two. Similarly, uh, like size of the store, I can take the cutoff value twenty thousand square feet, ten thousand square feet. But why thirty point five thousand square feet is chosen? So all of this will be answered once we see the the step. So the first step of the regress entry is I need to start with the complete training data in the Root node. So in our case, root node is node zero. So I have how many observations here? I have all 700 training data. I have so complete training data. I am taking it and starting the uh, model. The next step, which is very crucial, I split the root node using a predictor variable, which are also called independent variable. So that it results in maximum reduction in mean squared error. So if you remember the classification entry, in that case we used to split the node using a predictor variable so that it results in maximum reduction in what? Maximum reduction in uh, impurity. So in place of MAC, we used impurity. We use Gini index or entropy. So in this case, 
since our dependent variable is continuous in nature, we cannot use gene index or entropy, we are using mean squared error. So, that is one difference from classification entry. In classification entry, we used Gini or entropy uh, to find out which predictor variable should I use to split the node so that it results in maximum reduction in impurity. In classification entry, my objective is like reduction of impurity. In regress entry, my objective is reduction in MAC in that is mean squared error. Okay. Is that clear? Now, in step 3, I need to repeat the step 2. Okay. So, once I use uh, step 2, I will get to know like for which node, uh, which predictor variable will be used to split the node. Like if I go back, so node 0, I use size of the store as a predictor variable and that to 30.5 as a cutoff uh, value. Then in node 1, I used promotion to split the node. In node 2, I used age and the value cutoff value was 17.5. So, these this is how we splitted the node. Okay. Now, every step like I have to repeat step 2 every node for each internal node using independent variables that is predictor variables until the stopping criteria is met. Okay. So, now in this case you can see like we have total 6 node, node 0 was splitted using size of the store, cutoff value was 30.5, then node 1 was splitted using promotion, promotion is categorical variable, so I have 0, 1 uh, and node 2 was splitted using age cutoff value 17.5 that is how I got node 3, node 4, node 5 and node 6. Okay. I can go down further, but we have stopped it over here. So, why did I stop here? What are the general stopping criteria? We will discuss now. So, there are few stopping criteria. The first stopping criteria is level of the tree from the root node, like how much depth you want to go. So, in this case, we have gone up to level 2. So, this is level 1. In level 1, I have node 1, node 2. In level 2, I have node 3, 4, 5 and 6. Okay. So, I have gone up to this depth. So, the depth of the decision tree is 2. I can go up to one more level, then the depth of the decision tree will be 3. I can go another level depth 4, depth 5 and so on. And as you are seeing, if we increase the depth of the decision tree, then what would happen? My number of nodes will increase and the prediction will be better for the training data. Okay? I cannot comment as of now for the test data, but as you can see for the training data, my prediction will be better if we keep on increasing the depth of the decision tree, in this case regress entry. But what will happen in the test data that we will see uh, like in one of the future slides. Another stopping criteria is minimum number of observations in each node. Like if you see here node 3 I have 198, 28 percent observation, node 4 I have 414, 59 percent observation, good amount of support I have. But if you see node 5 and 6, 8 percent and 5 percent. So, now as a decision maker or model builder, you have to take a decision like should I split this node further, should I split this node further or not. So, in this case as of now I have only 5 percent. If I split this node obviously, in these two nodes, my observations will reduce. So, if the number of observations reduce, then my support also will be reducing, then I will have doubt in my prediction. I will get some predicted value, but the question is whether this predicted value is accurate or not. In the test data, whether this predicted value will be working 
fine or not. So, therefore, uh, we have to stop somewhere, we keep should not keep on splitting the node, we should not keep on increasing the depth of the decision tree. If we increase the depth of the decision tree for training data, my accuracy will keep on increasing, my MAC value will reduce, but in the test data I might have something different. So, therefore, I have to use like minimum number of observation in each node and I should not split it further. So, therefore, if I see that minimum 5 percent observations are there, I like you can decide a rule that you will not go below 5 percent. Okay. So, I will not split this node. If you decide that I will not go below 10 percent, you can also like stop over there. So, if I keep on increasing the depth, my ob number of observations will reduce that might impact my accuracy in the test data. Okay. So, therefore, that is the second uh, level of stopping criteria, second stopping criteria you can say the first was level of the tree. Like if you see node 4, I have huge number of observation 444. So, therefore, I can easily split this node because I after splitting also I would have good number of observation in both the children node. Similarly, I can further split this node also because I will also have good number of observation in the children node. So, wherever you will see like you have good number of observation, you can split the node, but if number of observations are less like less than 5 percent, less than 10 percent, then you have to be very careful and you have to use stopping criteria to stop and you should not split the node further. Then I have another stopping criteria is if the largest decrease in MAC would be less than some threshold. So, I will explain this in detail. Now, if you see uh, and node 0, I have all the 700 training data and my demand is 2270 and my MAC mean squared error is 8151813. Okay. Now, if I split this node further, I have to use that particular predictor variable, that particular independent variable so that it results in maximum reduction in MAC. Okay. Now, in this case, if I use size of the store and the cutoff value 30.5, then I will be able to get maximum reduction in MAC from node 0 to node 1 and node 2. Okay. In place of size of the store and the cutoff value 30.5, if I use any other independent variable, if I use any other cutoff value, then my reduction in MAC will not be as much. So, this particular combination size of the store as independent variable and size 30.5 thousand square feet that cutoff value will give me the maximum reduction in MAC. Now, if we keep on splitting the node, then I have some threshold I can use some threshold let us say delta. If the largest decrease in MAC, so from here to this two node, I have got some reduction in MAC. The largest decrease in MAC, if it is less than the threshold value, then I would not split the node. So, I would not split the node or I will stop splitting the node if the largest decrease in MAC would be less than some threshold. So, you have to decide the threshold. You can decide the threshold as delta in the model and you specify that if the largest decrease in MAC is less than that threshold delta, then I will not split it further. Okay. These are the three important stopping criteria for regress entry. Now, with this uh, stopping criteria, you know uh, when to stop uh, the regress entry and so on. The, but still, I think one of the concept is not explained in detail MAC like how this MAC value is calculated. So, in classification entry, uh, it was the Gini index or entropy, in this case it is MAC. Okay. So, now how MAC is calculated? 
uh, we will use the data uh, which you have used to develop the model and explain the MSC concept. So, I have 700 observation you can see in the training data and for each 700 observation I have the value of 7 independent variable 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 then this is like 1, 6 the region and 7. So, I have 7 independent variables and their uh, value and I have dependent variable order quantity. Okay. Now, I have 700 observation. So, the best predicted value is their average. So, if I take the average of all the 700 observation, it will turn out to be 2270. Okay. Now, this you can write it as y bar okay. and I have y 1, y 2, y 3 dot 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 y 700. Okay. So, I have y 700 these are my actual order quantity and this is my predicted value. So, 2270 that is y bar is my predicted value the actual value is y 1, y 2, y 3 dot dot y 700. Okay. Now, what I have to do next step? I will calculate squared error. What is the error? y i minus y bar that is the error. Then I am taking the square of it and then summing it over i, i equal to 1 to 700. Okay. So, that value I will get I will sum it and then take the average. So, I have to first, so this is 1637669, how I am getting this value? I am getting it 990, 990 minus 22700 square, I will get 1637669. Similarly, I will get 780 minus 22700 square, I will get 2219.49. So, I will sum it up all this value like from i equal to 1 to 700 and then take the average, average that is 700 divided by 700. So, that value will be same as 8151813 that is why it called mean squared error. So, mean nothing but average. So, in this case I am averaging it over 700 observation divided by 700 you can see square error y i minus y bar square. So, that is how this MS is calculated. So, is it clear now? Okay. So, if I see the same value you will get it in the regression tree also 8151813 that is at the node 0 in which I have all 700 observation and there is no information about the retailer. So, the best predicted value is nothing but the average value. Okay. Now, let us see how this MS is calculated and how this MS is calculated. Okay. So, I have splitted the node using size of the store, the size less than equal to 30.5, size greater than 30.5. So, first I will take this data, size less than equal to 30.5. How many observations I have? 612 observation and predicted demand is 1902. So, let us see how do I get this data. So, now these are the data set 612 for which size is less than equal to 30.5 thousand square feet. Okay. You can check here 612 observation size less than equal to 30.5. Okay. Now, I have all the information variable 1, variable 2, variable 3, variable 4, variable 5, this is my variable 6, this is my variable 7 okay. and I have their actual order quantity. So, in this case if I write I have y 1, y 2 dot 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 y 6 1 2 this is my actual order quantity. And what is my predicted value? Predicted value is nothing but average of this 612 observation which is 1902. Okay. So, this is in this case y bar. 
So what is the next step? I will find out the error. What is the error? In the first case error is y1 minus y bar, second y2 minus y bar and so on. So if I just summarize the error will be yi minus y bar. Okay. So how 831225 is calculated? First I will subtract 990 minus 1902. So 990 minus 1902 that is y minus y bar. Then this is squared. So squared. So if I calculate this squared error, I will get this value. So how do I get 1258246? Nothing but 780 minus 1902 square and so on. So I will get y i minus y bar square for all 612 observations. Then I have to sum it up. I have to sum it up over i equal to 1 to 612. So that is called sum of squared error. Then I have to divide it with number of observations 6, 1, 12. So if you do this, you will end up getting 6605698 as mean squared error. Okay. Same thing you will see 6605698 as a mean squared error. Now how do we get 4829 and this value as MAC? I have to see the data for which size is more than 30.5000 square feet. Okay. So now let us see this table. I have 88 observation uh, with size more than 30.5000 square feet from the training data. I have all of their information, okay. independent variable 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, independent variable 6 and independent variable 7. And I have the value of their actual demand that is actual order quantity. So I have let us say I can write it y1, y2, dot, 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 y88. And then average of this value is y bar, which is 4829. So, what is the error? y1 minus y bar. So, 8250 minus 4829, that is my error, but I am taking squared error. So, it will be yi minus y bar square. Okay. So, first one will be y1 minus y bar square, I will get 11703397. Similarly, if I do 7560 minus 4829 square, I will get 7458485 and so on. So, all this square error is calculated. Then I have to sum it up i equal to 1 to how much? 88 and divided by 88. So, if I do this, I will get 11412707 as my MAC. Why? Because I am first doing squared error, summing it up, then averaging it. So, I am getting 11412707. So, that is how like MAC is calculated and if I show you the regression tree, MAC is also same value. So, every node you have to calculate the mean squared error, you have to calculate the average demand with that characteristic. So, that average demand will be my predicted demand. I should use MAC parameter to find out like in which node, which predictor variable should I use so that it results in maximum reduction in MAC and that variable I should brought in. So, therefore, MAC plays a very, very important role in regression tree. In classification tree, we saw Gini and entropy play a very important role to split the role, split the node. Here in regression tree, MAC plays an important role. So, you saw all of these steps now. Similarly, before we summarize, so we can like same way you can get the data like size less than equal 30.5, promotion 0. Use the same data, you will be able to find out average demand 943, MAC same size less than equal to 30.5, promotion 1, you will have 414 observation, you can find out MAC and 2360 as average demand. So, node 5 and node 6, so node 3, 4, 5 and 6, I am not showing you the calculation, the exactly same steps, you have to take data with this characteristic. So, node 3 will have size less than equal to 30.5, 
promotion 0. Use these two parameters and get the data and do the same steps as I explained, you will get 943 average value and MAC 2384088. Similarly, if I take data whose size is more than 30.5, age more than 17.5, collect those data, you will have 32 such observations. You can find out the average demand, you can find out the MSE, it will match. So, therefore, do this as an assignment or as a homework and match these results. Since this is repetitive uh, in nature, I am not showing it in the slide, but I request all of the participants to do it and check and verify that average demand and MAC values are matching. Okay. So, with this, uh, we will uh, finish the lecture. So, the summary of uh, the steps of building regression trees first start with the complete training data in the root node. Then step 2 split the root node using a predictor variable so that it results in maximum reduction in MSE. Then step 3 repeat step 2 for each internal node using independent variable until the stopping criteria is met. So, what is the stopping criteria? First level of tree from root node, level can be depth 1, depth 2, depth 3, depth 4 and so on. Minimum number of observations in each node or if the largest decrease in MSE would be less than some threshold value. So, these are the uh, like steps of building decision tree. So, with this we will stop this lecture, uh, like see you in the next class. Thank you.